Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about three ways, three ways to prevent your z-axis uh, from falling. Uh, it's a real problem in printers like this where the extruder is on the x-axis so you're trying to change the filament and this ends up dropping um, or even if you've got a direct extruder which this doesn't have you're fiddling around on here and it results in the z-axis uh, moving which affects your bed leveling. It's also a huge problem in delta printers when they've got their three arms, I don't know how to do three, three arms, and when the power is off or whatever, then the whole gantry like falls down and, and falls into the printer and wrecks it. Uh, and uh, printers, this is a, what I call a shake and bake printer, but printers where the, the, the bed moves up and down, they normally have two screws and when uh, the power is off or when you're trying to remove the print job, typically, uh, you can end up pushing the bed out of kilter and that just ends up having to level beds all day long. Uh, that's certainly been my experience so far with uh, all the printers except for Delta because I don't have a Delta printer is that I seem to be having to constantly change the leveling uh, because it moves when I'm trying to change the filament or do something. So there are three ways I have come up with to resolve this issue. Uh, number one is change the spring, that's the spring, the uh, screw not relevant to deltas but is to everything else change it from a eight millimeter lead to a two millimeter lead and that means it needs significantly more force to rotate it and that alone to be honest pretty much does it for me um, and that improves the accuracy as well um, the second is to always have your extruders powered on extruders <laughs> got this problem with extruders not extruders have your z-axis motors always engaged uh, which is what I've wired up here so by default you'll turn on your printer and the motors will not be on despite the fact that the printer is on and that will enable you to turn this relatively easily and that affects your leveling of course so what I've done now is I've actually rewired this and you hear a bit of a clunk when I turn it on well, not really and and so that's the motors are now on by default you can hear it clicking around like they're on and that obviously means that that uh, that is preventing the bed well the x-axis in this uh, printer from being able to get out of level so this means now there's significantly more force holding it in place I can change the filament and it no longer adjusts the x-axis by mistake. Now, there is some ways of doing this through G-code. I don't know, I have looked into this, I don't know if that is actually possible to turn on the motors when you turn the printer on. I know that there is a code that which you can send to it which will turn it on and uh, at the end of most people's prints, I think it's an M48 that will turn it off. But I just think that was way too much hassle and I just wanted to know 100% sure that the motors were always engaged and that does mean that after the print they'll never turn off but that is the idea and I wanted to make sure they're always on for part three of this part one was change the screws part two is to <clears throat> make sure your motors have always got power and this part two is the cheapest and what I've done is I've actually just modified the stepper to ensure that it is always enabled and therefore always applying power. Now this is a standard one, so this hasn't been modified, that's what it looks like, and I'll turn the printer off and show you the other one. Because I don't want to blow it up. So what I've done... is I have cut off the enable pin Right, so I've cut off the enable pin. Now this is a bit Mickey Mouse, and I thought about doing it better, but I kind of wanted it like this, at least for testing. See, there's a pin missing, and it's fairly easy because to know which one, because the printer it even tells you EN is enabled. So I've just cut that off. So that means the printer, the controller, can no longer turn this this stepper on and off. So that means uh, if I just plugged it in like this without this wire plugged in, the stepper would never work. I then have just 
stuck a wire on there, which you could say I could just solder this directly to the driver's ground and not do this, but I decided to do it like this anyway. I then just plunked it into a random ground, which on this printer, uh, it was like the middle pin on one of these. Okay. And that sent ground to that pin and it now never turns off. Hallelujah, to be honest. No more uh, Jolly Z's uh, reliving all of the time. So that's all very good and well, and I think that um, for almost all printers, that is uh, those two things combined, or at least just this combined, and this is effectively free mod, is all you need to do. Uh, I just You just need to remember that if you're going to take your prints off on one that has the bed moving, you need to have the, the printer on. And same with this, if you're going to change the filament, it's got to be on. That's all we need to do. However, it does still create the problem for extremely heavy Z uh, x-axis, which is pushing on the Z, and it, you may get some rotation, uh, but I wouldn't think on a normal printer like this that would be a problem. However, it's still a huge problem on Delta printers. And what you can do is get a motor, which I don't actually have, but I thought we should talk about it. A motor that actually has a brake, which I'll show you a picture, on the end of it. Now what that means is that when the power is turned off, or off, or however you want to say that hard word, you have to give it, forgive me for my access, uh, access, accent, um, that applies a mechanical brake. So when the power is off, to the brake, this can no longer turn because of course this is super easy to turn when there's no power on it and no braking enabled. So it is an additional part that goes on the end of here. You can add them to an existing stepper motor but I think it's probably easy just to buy a stepper with a brake. And what that means is when the power is off to the brake, it's got a separate power leads, that it will apply a mechanical brake preventing it from turning. Now that is great but you need to be able to turn that on and off so they, all the ones I can see run on 24 volts, and that's perfectly fine if you've got a 24 volt printer and power supply. If you don't, that is a bit more annoying. So you can just wire that directly to the power supply on a 24 volt um, power supply slash printer. If you have a 12 volt printer, you can still use it by buying a buck. No, I said I was going to get this right and I still got it wrong. A boost controller. A buck converts voltages down, a boost converts them up. So you can just take the 12 volts and put it through a boost controller out to 24 and then to power your brakes. Now when the power is turned on then, the power supply will turn on. It will then power the brakes and the brakes are held off as long as there is power going to the brake which means as long as the printer is on, the brake is off. And now you can see why I want the combo of the, the stepper motors turning on when the power is applied, because that means that'll instantaneously turn the, the mechanical brake off. And, but however, it will then apply the braking through the motor itself and you won't have Zs moving all over the place. So that's the two ways uh, to really do it other than changing the screws. But for most people, uh, just having the Zs on all the time and knowing that if you want to remove your prints or change your filament, do it when the power is on. Beyond that, get a brake. Do the combination of the two. Otherwise, if you don't do the, the first mod with the, uh, the stepper drivers, then you still have that situation that when the power is on, then the Z axis can still easily move. And of course, we're talking about Z axis. Uh, but you can make all of these changes to all of the axes. Uh, but uh, for a 3D printer, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can mechanically leave them all on. I don't. I allow the normal process of turning the X and the Y and the extruders off when the, the power is on and the print job is done and whatnot, because I find I want to move it. Uh, but that's like a super easy mod. Like I said, just cut the enable pin off solder ground to the enable pin and that will force the driver to always be enabled as long as the power is going to it it'll be on stopping it from rotating woohoo all right guys hope you've enjoyed that one uh i'll obviously put in the links below to some of the stuff we talked about i'll see you on the next one Bye bye